River. So, start at the very beginning. How's a kid from Estonia pick up basketball? When did you realize that it was your calling? I had no option. My dad played basketball, so. Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, growing up, I played soccer and basketball. I wanted to be a soccer player. Uh, you know, as a kid, it's easier to kick the kick the ball with your legs uh, instead of trying to trying to play basketball and shoot it in the hoop. But uh, my parents, my dad, guided me. Like I said, he played pro uh, many many years for national team. So so I guess I actually had no choice. When did you decide you wanted to come to the United States? play college ball? How'd you get recruited over here? Uh, growing up, I didn't really know much about college. Um, I just knew some bigger schools. Uh, my goal wasn't to go to college. Um, I was very close going pro, but um, uh, I saw how how the pro life is when you're not in top, top teams, and, um, and I uh, started looking into uh, college options and uh, in the end of the day college looked so much more fun to me personally and uh, also for my um, development um, just I wanted to keep keep uh, growing and improving on my game and I felt like college was the was the perfect spot for me for that what did your dad tell you to do? Um, I do uh, say that my dad never he let me do my own decisions. Uh, he wasn't one of those dads who, who was on the sideline yelling at the sun or, or you know how this. I don't want to disrespect anybody, but the American dads are, you know. Uh, so I had very open, open hands, and uh, and my family supported me throughout, till now. Like you know, this is my family. They told me, whatever feels right for me, I, I gotta do it. And you know, I felt like that was the right decision. You consult him or ask him questions of what you should do, or you pretty much do your own thing. I mean, I did my own thing. Um, you know, I trusted my gut, um, and uh, yeah, here I am. So how was the transition to the United States when you came over? How was it at Arizona, and then why did you ultimately decide to transfer? Yeah, I mean, in the beginning it was different. It's uh, it's hell of a transition. I mean, I had never eaten Mexican food before I got to Tucson, and next thing you know, all they eat there is Mexican food, right? Tacos and stuff like that. So, you know, I was pretty often on the, on the bathroom and the toilet, you know, my stomach <laughs> kind of couldn't take it. But, um, you know, you you get used to. Mexican food here. <laughs> yeah. See, I haven't I haven't eaten here yet. <laughs> I'm taking a. I had a good three years in Tucson. I'm taking a break from Mexican food, and uh, you know. But uh, yeah, and uh, I mean, I've, the reason why I left uh, Arizona, I just felt like it was time to move on, honestly. Um, you know, I had, like I said, I had g great three years there under coach Sean Miller and uh, coach Tommy Lloyd. Um, I mean, I love this dude still now. Like there was no, no beef or no harm going out. Um, you know, me and the coaching staff, we sat down, we talked about, you know, what I'm trying to do and, and they understood it and you know everything was you know there's no no beef like if I would if I would pick up the phone right now and call Tommy I know for sure he would pick it up so these are my guys. Kerr obviously everything that kind of transpired this summer you went back into the portal and then decided to come back I mean obviously there's probably a lot of questions and things running through your mind at that time can you just kind of take us you know, through those couple of weeks, uh, you know, what that was like for you and, and what brought you back, I guess. Yeah, uh, I mean, it was a messy week for sure, um, or longer than a week. But, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, like, as basically, I, I committed to Coach Bob Huggins. And, uh, you know, when he was gone, I just felt I felt um, that everybody deserves a chance to re-recruit me again, including uh, Josh Eilert. And um, that's that's what I basically did. I just, you know, I, I needed to make sure j how Josh wants me here, what Josh wants to do here, et cetera, et cetera. And, of course, uh, I mean, I got to give all credit to Bob Huggins, too. Uh, you know, after everything went down, you know, Bob, Bob told me that he's going to be here for me, you know, whatever, you know, whatever I need, et cetera. Like, and I felt... That made me feel very comfortable that even though if he's not around the team 
uh, he's still going to be here in Morgantown and and be here for me. Describe the player you are and the player you want to be. Uh, I think I'm I think I'm a creative player. Uh, kind of, you know, I don't really like to be between like lines. I feel like basketball is game of mistakes and uh, and and yeah, pretty just free flowing. Uh, I I would consider myself a leader, uh, trying to hold everybody accountable and stuff like that. And the player I want to be. I mean, I want to be the best player I can be. I want to, you know, improve on every aspect I, I can improve on and. And uh, yeah. Josh mentioned he said that he's encouraging you to shoot a little more. You're a pass first guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> choosing the first time I chose West Virginia, I saw the roster. I was like, okay, you know, I can come here, move the ball around, you know. Um, and now my role is become a little bit different. I actually have to start shooting more. So it's a little, a little weird um, for sure because my instincts and my yeah, like you said, I'm a pass first point guard, so it's kind of a hard to be more selfish, I guess. But I'm 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 trying to do that, and uh, and hopefully it turns out good. Scoring's not a bad thing. No, it's not. But I just love passing that much that it, you know. And now I'm already I'm old, so um, so it's a little bit maybe hard to start changing some habits. Jesse's a good guy to throw to. Oh yeah, Jesse. I mean, I'm all these kids are good. I mean. Jojo, Raekwon, I mean, and I'm not even talking about basketball aspect, like, the, as they are, like, how they are as a kids, like, they're good kids, and I think it's super, super special, especially if we're trying to do something big here, to have a good uh, team chemistry, and I think we're, we're doing an amazing job at it. I spent one spring training out in Tucson uh, covering the team, one of the teams that was out there then, and it was kind of a culture shock for me. I, I can't imagine going from Estonia to the desert to seeing miles and miles of nothing but sand and cactus and Pinnacle Peak out there. And no, yeah, 100%. I mean, after I... Yeah, I mean, I actually, I got some photos a few days ago from, from Tucson. I completely forgot how, how like... Um, there's no like uh, green, you know how it's literally a desert. But when you're in there, you kind of get used to it, and you don't even pay attention to it. And and you know when I came on my visit, you know at the time I had been being in Tucson for quite a bit, and then I just came out here, and everything was just so green and nice, and yeah, it was just good. So besides that, how does Movie Town compare? Obviously, it's a whole lot smaller, but a little bit more like back home. Yeah, for sure. It's, um, Except maybe the it's it's hilly here. I don't know, man. These roads. I mean, thank God I have a I have a bigger car than like a like a reg regular small car. But I mean, the roads are crazy here for sure. Um, but I like it here. I think Morgantown is a place. It's definitely not a place for everybody. Um, you know, it's either you like it or you hate it. And uh, I happen to really like it for sure. There's obviously a lot of people around the state fans who are kind of wondering what this team is going to be about with all the changes over the summer and just you know new guys coming in uh friday night obviously the scrimmage in front of the fans what do you think people will learn or, and and see about this team i think on friday they won't learn much because you know i think this event is more for the fans just to you know that we can just you know kind of bond together because we're going to have a hell of a year for sure um, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't put too much pressure on us. Like, you know, we have a new coach. We got a, we got a whole, whole new team. Um, but, I mean, for us, it's just it's more like of an excitement because, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I think people are doubting us. And, you know, I think it's better that way. Uh, you know, I've been in Arizona for, for two years. We were number one, two seed back-to-back -back years. And, you know, it's it's not always easy to deal with the expectations uh, that everybody's, you know, expecting something big to happen. And then, you know, when you lose one game, then, okay, maybe we don't win national championship now this year, you know, so, but uh, I'm, I'm excited here. Yeah, like I said, uh, we have nothing to lose. And uh, of course, we're gonna have a chip on our shoulder. We're representing not only Morgantown, the whole state, which is very, very special. What's it been like for you 
getting to know, you know, a whole new roster, not just personally, but, you know, how they play, how you can play with them. Uh, that, what's that been like? Good. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> I've been playing. I mean, I had Benedict Mathurin, you know, very good guys, you know, in my team who are now in the league. And, and you know, when I'm looking around who I have this year here, I mean, it's it's not far. I mean, Raekwon is a freak athlete, like, and I mean Jesse Quinn. Like, that's why it's. I think it's so excited because I know that we have a lot of potential there, uh, and we can do something very very special. The basketball you played back in Europe, right? Like Lithuania, I believe you played. Some yeah, of, yeah. Um, and then some of the national team. Um, what are those experiences like compared to basketball, like in the college in the U.S.? Because it's got to be worlds apart at some point, right? Uh, you mean playing for a national team? Yeah. I mean, just anything you did overseas versus, you know, Pac-12 or what you so far experienced. I mean, national teams are always special because, uh, you know, you, you kind of grow up in a country and everybody grows up in the same culture. Uh, you're representing the same stuff, uh, you know. That's all you've, you've thought. That's all you, you know. And when you have 12 guys who, you know, who eat the same food for all their lives, who you know, who believe in the same stuff, it's very special because, because, and then you have the fans, I don't know, it's very hard to explain, but, but national teams are something that I don't take for granted and nobody should take for granted, but, uh, yeah, it's, national teams are like my favorite things, when they have the small windows and then you gotta go and then you have the, you know, funniest physiotherapist there and, you know, it's just national teams are super fun, and I don't even know how to put it into words, but it's different than college for sure. And then I think you played in some, I don't know if there were leagues or professional leagues, but there were one or two in Lithuania, right? Yeah, I mean, college is, uh, college is, I mean, for sure we don't, uh, we don't get that much fans, I would say, uh, as we get in college in, in, the, in the top leagues. Uh, I mean, I'm just, Bringing a comparison from Arizona, I mean, our our stuff was sold out for 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 three years. You know, every every game pretty much. So, and back back over. It also depends where you play, I guess. If you play Euroleague, you're chilling. But if you play like Iceland, then it's it's not ideal. <laughs> the, the Constitution of Russia, like you probably have older guys, like significantly older than you there. Yeah, yeah I know for sure. Yeah, and that's what kind of made me coming back to the question who asked me before that, you know. Uh, why did I decide to go to college or whatever? I mean, it wasn't easy. You're, in, you know, you're a 16 year old uh, kid. You have a teammate who's 35. Um, practice ends. He showers and then he just needs to go right away back to his house because you got two kids and a wife to take care of. And then you're there, 16 years old. You're away from home. You're like thinking, all right, what what should I do now? And then you're just sitting and you know everybody leaves and then you you kind of feel like lonely. I would say. So uh, yeah, college is for sure more fun. Iceland's a long trip, though. That's no, no disrespect. I mean, uh, Iceland. I, I just that was what I came up with. Um, how's your perspective changed since you've been uh, in the United States? About your just your outlook on life. I mean, I mean, obviously you've experienced different cultures and different things. How are you different? Uh, I think I've I've grown as a person uh, for sure, but uh, I mean life. Uh, I would say uh, that's a that's a hard one. I say you can't get in the car and go home and see your mom and dad. It's not like that. You're yeah, but I was made a big leap. Yeah, I mean, I kind of I I moved away from home when I was like 15, so I've been kind of used to it. But maybe in the beginning it was more mental that you know, because Lithuania. I played in Lithuania for a couple of years, and Lithuania, Estonia, that's a like hour flight, and now you get to states and you know wherever you feel a little homesickness you're like shit 25 hours flight you know like you know that that was maybe the the hardest part just mentally dealing with knowing that you're so so away from home like i had sister visiting me for christmas when i was in arizona and i mean she was like she she thought she was flying like literally other side of the world and when you look at the map then you almost are <laughs> So it's uh, it's no joke for sure, but it's it's all. 
I would say it's all mental more. Uh, you know, nowadays you got FaceTimes, you got all options to communicate with your family, etc. Even grandparents. I mean, my grandma, grandpa, they have Facebooks. Like Facebooks, by the way, are a big thing in Europe. Here, I know it's not anymore that big, but yeah. Off the court training, like uh, weightlifting and stuff. Uh, here in the, in the United States, is it different? Than For the sure. Okay. Very different here. You put some weights on, like yeah. you, you, you know, the coach is like, all right, keep adding weight, and then back home it's more like, you know, all right, let's take our the stretching bands and you know let's move them a little bit. So here it's for sure harder work, and I mean, I gotta give a lot of props to um, Coach Sean Brown. I mean, the the change that me and him, the work that I put in, and the change me and him did this summer with my body is. Uh, I mean, day and night, and it's been only, what, three months, three and a half months, so I'm very excited, and I'm very, very thankful for him. Really miss about home food, anything that yeah, stands get, out? Yeah, some snacks, some, you know, growing up childhood snacks, and always, you know, I always say this, but I always miss my grandma food, you know, nothing beats that. Um, and just, yeah, just seeing my family, my sister, some friends for sure, but... Is what it is. I'm it's the perfect grandma meal. Yeah. yeah. Soup. Soup. Soup, and uh, she makes the best meatballs too, with some some great potatoes. So, yeah. Sure, thank you. Thank you guys.